Everybody, it's Tyler here at Fit Waco, checking in with team number 6,800. Valorous team last year uh, took Texas all the way uh, there, had a good run at championships, looking for a lot more here at Fit Waco. By the way, joining me uh, on the team talk more about uh, Valorous can be Bridget Alejandro. Cooper and Krishna uh, driving the background here. And take a look at 6800 here. Another great, fantastic design uh, that they're offering. Uh, very interesting uh, arm we'll be talking about as we go through that whole journey uh, with a cool claw. Uh, a lot of cool automation I've seen on the field as well from this team. So we'll talk about how that's all working, what's going on in the structure. Let's find out more about 6800s here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Bridget, let's start out uh, talking about uh, your chassis in here. So uh, from your team here, uh, 1600 has been building uh, just super robust robots the last couple of years that have just been absolutely tearing down the field. Talk to me about what's unique on your chassis and we'll kind of work our way from there. Yeah, of course. So one thing about our chassis was we wanted to keep a very small and compact design that was still fast. So we went with the 23 by 23 chassis. Originally it was 20 by 20, but we faced a lot of tipping issues. So we sized that up as well as added an aluminum plate on our um, battery mount. And so that was able to lower our center of gravity. And we run on Swerve West Coast um, X modules, which look like this. And yeah, that's kind of our chassis. So uh, from West Coast Prox, I think last year we were using the SDS uh, Swerves. Um, yes. <laughs> and so you went over to uh, the, the WCP this year. Uh, what have you found uh, in regards to changing to, or is there any really big difference you found between yeah, these two? it was nice to iterate because we were able to choose our own gear ratios and just fix it. So we were able to go with what we wanted in terms of like speed and all that. And also just overall design was much easier to go all around. Let's start talking about some of the scoring elements uh, on the robot here. Where do you guys want to start? Yeah, so we decided to do a pole arm setup, and uh, we have uh, three degrees of freedom total with this whole elev arm setup. So let me just start out with the elevator here. We did a three by three aluminum box tube, and we did finite element analysis to look at the forces required on the entire elevator. And we determined that a quarter inch web thickness would be thick enough to suffice for the amount of load that we wanted and big hits if we did fall into that scenario. So we took in, into account a lot uh, when we were designing the elevator to keep our center of gravity as low as possible. We're powering it by two NEOs. We have a constant force spring to create a net zero extension. In our carriage, we have one motor, one Falcon 500, driving the rotation of the arm here. And that's done at a 74 to one reduction. And um, the, the unique thing about this carriage is that our entire gearbox is on slots, which we can rotate with the cam, and we can, uh, with the slotted gearbox, we can tension the chain on our on our shoulder. And that for us has been really useful because we find ourselves often having to retension the chain, and so having that ability with with this design made it really nice. I want to ask you from the, the tower, when you were looking at designing the robot uh, in general, obviously your tower's way off the side here, you got your intake on this way. Uh, what made you figure out like, hey, like having that kind of that extra weight on this side is going to be right for your team to have the tower structured over here? Right. So we knew at the beginning of the season that we wanted to create a robot that could score off both sides and pick up off both sides. So uh, we found out that one of the ways to do that would, to, would be to have a cantilevered arm set up because that would allow for full swing through with the, with the arm and um, rotation. On the end of our, of our arm setup, we have a herringbone wrist. Is that a 10 DP ratio? And we're actually running a mag encoder on it, so we have absolute position with it. We also have a mag encoder with our carriage mechanism uh, for, the, for the shoulder rotation. So we have two mag encoders total, and we can rotate the entire intake at once. I've been seeing more teams using the uh, herringbone uh, type gear set on there. Uh, what experience has your team had with that, and what do you maybe recommend to teams if they're look, looking at using something like this in the future? So we really like the herringbone setup because um, it really like vectors the, the forces in and it kind of locks it in place. 
and we, we've liked using that. And we took inspiration from 125 in their week zero um, after we had to redesign the intake. So our intake, this is actually our second like major iteration of it. Initially, we had had a horizontal plane in pickup, but we faced a lot of issues with how accurate it was to pick up, and we wanted to have more margin of error for a pickup. So we moved it to a vertical collection with a designated cone and cubes uh, pickup, and it is all based off this rainbow gear, so we can put it at a different angle. This is all programmed, though, so it's set points at the arm height and angle, and it can pick up depending on the cone and cube. I got to ask you from your intake. I have to admit, yeah. when uh, I first saw Valor, I was kind of expecting a little bit wider intake yes. uh, to come from your team. So, uh, you know, I've, I've watched you in the field. You're obviously able to pick up game piece with the East. So, how did you determine that, like, that width of an intake would be appropriate for your team? Yeah, of course. So, we knew that we wanted a small robot design because we didn't want a huge amount of weight on the top. Sure. If we had too much weight on the top, that meant that we would be tipping. So, that was all center of gravity oriented. So, having a smaller intake, if we were able to still keep a consistent, um, accuracy then it was worth having a smaller intake yeah and like i said watching on the field i mean your robot just seems to, to really just traverse all over the field with ease yes. uh, for it it drives well it's able to intake well it's able to do a lot of things with that i know software goes a long way uh with making that happen as well too so uh, cooper i got to hear more about what's gone into uh, the software side of things and, and how are you looking at uh controlling the field uh from doing that yeah so uh starting from the beginning uh we use a state-based c plus plus code structure to control our robot um, we also have polymorphic classes so that we can use different types of motor controllers, subsystems, very easily swappable. We've abstracted a lot of uh, functions so we can do everything with a lot of or less code changes. Um, and then the biggest thing for this year is controlling a eight pound lever arm on the end of a 40 inch arm is yeah. uh, kind of difficult. So our biggest thing was learning how to use arbitrary feed forward and better PID controls on the arm, specifically our rotation. And then to actually control to our set points, we've created a reverse kinematics equation. So based off of a um, arm rotation and a carriage height, we can calculate exactly where the end of our intake will be, or the end of our intake will be on the ground in meters. So we have an X and a Z plane, and that means that in code, we can set a position in, an, in anywhere in the X and Z plane around the robot that the arm can reach, and it will actually move to that position like very accurately within half a centimeter. Can we demonstrate some of that and kind of narrate us uh, what's happening for that? Yeah, and so this is going on to our next part of our software is our autonomous. So this year we swapped our autonomous, our autonomous so that we can run um, all of our autonomous based on CSV files. And so we have in our code, we can read through CSV files and run different commands. And this running right now is actually our L of arm test sequence. So this will run to all of our arm positions so that we know that our clearances are good and that we can run during the match. So, Looking yeah. at uh, from auto in the future, so so far when I've watched a couple of your matches, it looks like you're able to score the cone, then you go and you balance on yep. uh, that. What are maybe some future plans for Autonomous for your team? I think uh, more of our future plans are making our balance more consistent because in our own shop, it's not as consistent as it is on the field. Yeah. Um, but then after that, we're just focusing on scoring more cones, cycling more, getting an accurate pickup on our intake during auto. And one more thing with this setup is that uh, we're only using about 40% of our max arm speed. So once we can sort out the CG, we'll hopefully have a much faster arm. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing that, Valor. Uh, looking forward to a great year from your team. I'm sure you are as well, too. Of course, here at Fit Waco, can't wait to see how you do here and in future ones as well. Thanks a lot for taking time and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.